Hey guys, it's Yassi from JJ's One Girl Band and today I want to reveal a secret. I'm going to tell you how I am recording my guitar covers or how you can record your own guitar cover. Well, of course it all starts with a song you want to learn and let me give you this advice. It doesn't make sense to choose a song you don't like and you don't want to play. Also, don't choose a song you just want to use to impress others. It's all about you. If you don't have fun, if you don't feel comfortable, don't record a cover to this song. For me, I will never record a Bring Me The Horizon cover because I don't like this band. I'm sorry guys, but there are some borders I don't want to cross and you also shouldn't cross. So, if you have chosen the song you would like to cover, you would need a camera to capture you. This is my very first camera I have used, no, the second. The first camera was a Sony Ericsson <laughs> camera, which wasn't too great. This was my first serious Digicam I purchased for around 180 euros. And I have recorded my Master of Puppets guitar cover with this camera. But if you don't want to invest so much money, you can also just take the cam of your phone. Just start somewhere. I also started with the crappy camera of my mobile phone. The next gear you might have to purchase is an audio interface. I have used my Steinberg UR22 for several years until it broke. It was about 90 euros when I purchased it, so it was okay and affordable. This is the Native Instruments Complete Audio 6. It's a bit better, I think, and it's also processing better. This is the interface I use now, but you don't need that high quality in the beginning. There are people that use universal audio interfaces and I'm like, well, I need to save a lot of money until I can afford this. So if you want to start seriously recording your guitar, get yourself an audio interface, 90 euros is enough. The next step is your guitar, preparing your guitar, of course. Here is mine and I have just recorded a guitar cover of Trivium's Strife with this setup. So to reveal other secrets, some people ask me what I have here on my headstock. It's a tripod. I always had a very blue tripod by Migo, but this that thing broke after two years and I have purchased one for nine euros. It's a nine euro tripod with soft um, stands <laughs> so that it won't damage the guitar. I wrap it around the headstock so that my action camera, which I got for 80 euros, it's now about 30 euros <laughs> so that I can mount it here on my headstock and show you guys how my fretting hand works. Then I have here, on the body, um, a mount for this action camera from Sony. It was a bit more expensive and I have used a Patreon pledge for purchasing this camera, otherwise I couldn't afford it myself. But it was on sale for 200 euros and it's a 4K action cam, so it's really cool. And this one here is a Triad Orbit camera mount. You can use it for everything. This camera here is holding on a shelf with one of these things. And I have used another one here for fixing my other action cam on the body of the guitar so that you can see what my picking hand does. Also here is some foam so that the body of the guitar won't get damaged at all. So before you choose to record fancy camera angles. Make sure you don't damage your instrument. You prepare your guitar with plugging in the cable and I will also give you a tip here. Don't purchase the cheapest guitar cables because these are the connection from the guitar to the audio interface and if the cable sucks, your signal will suck. So make sure you don't purchase a cable for under 15 euros, that's enough for the start. This one here is a very special cable I got from Musikproduktiv, it's a Karlskabel, 
uh, from a guy called Carl. He does these cables on his own, he handcrafts them and they are really really good. But just as an idea if you want to get more serious about it. This is my setup basically and if you want to see my cameras here, this is my main camera. <laughs> it's a Lumix, Panasonic Lumix DMC LX15. It's a 4K cam and I can um, make the, all these fancy zoom ins in one video because it's 4K and this is pretty awesome. I have saved money for at least two or three years to purchase that one. And the camera you see here is a Canon Legria Mini X. I use it for vlogging stuff and additional cameras. So now let's take a look at the setup on the PC. Right, so now here I am on my desk and here is my PC running. My DAW, that is the program with which you can record sounds, is a Reaper. And Reaper looks like this. It's a free program if you don't use it for commercial purpose. Otherwise you might buy a license. But for you, if you are just starting out and want to test it, this program is completely for free and I totally recommend it to you guys because it's awesome. Yeah, so what is a DAW program? It's a recording program and it allows you to load some VST plugins into it. What does this mean? So if you want to kind of record a guitar cover, then you might import the file you want to cover into this program. You can do this pretty easily if you're um, running your Explorer and have a file you want to import, you just take this file and drop it into the program and it is in the program. I've done this before. So here it is, Strife. Because of copyright matters, I have muted this file. And all you have to do in order that you're able to record is connecting your interface to your PC on a USB port and Normally it will load automatically because your PC might be connected to the internet and the interface will download all the drivers it needs in order to work properly. So once this interface is connected to your PC and your DAW is loaded, you can here insert tracks. Here I have already inserted a bunch of tracks because I have just recorded Strive by Trivium. But what you do is, if you want to record your insert a new track, and this is the track that appears now, and you can then choose what input you want to record. So, my interface has two inputs, left and right, because if you see before it has two connections. So, I choose input mono left. This means now the input is track that is on the left side of my audio interface, which is pretty easy to understand, I think. And you cannot record at the moment, you have to arm this track for recording. This is when you are pressing here, this red knob, recording knob, and you might also hear what you want to play. So here it's the record monitoring, it's off. And now you can turn it on. And there is a... Yeah, I won't explain too much for you. You just arm this record and press the monitor speaker here in order that you can hear what you're recording. And the next thing is that you grab your guitar and play something. Ah, of course, I don't hear anything because I don't have an effects here. So if you have your track arm, and the monitor activated. You then click here on FX and there you will find all the VST plugins or all FXs that can be loaded into the program. And I use BIOS Amp 2 and BIOS FX for recording. I also have got a BIOS head but I really like to use the program directly. BIOS head is really really cool for jamming and recording spontaneously. This is, I can so recommend this bias hat to you, it's so plain amazing. And I have played a tour with this amplifier with my band Oversense and it worked so well. 
But here at home I just use the program and there I load BIOS FX. If you want to know more about the program BIOS and BIOS FX and M, you can just tell me in the comments. Otherwise here you will see my banks. I have bank 1 and bank 2. In bank 2 I have several or different presets from Lamp of God to Rammstein to Disturbed or even Metallica. And now I want to record something really cool for Trivium and I think this one here, this sound, isn't too great. So maybe Disturbed. This is better. But I don't need the chorus. It's pretty decent. And here you can just choose whatever preset you want to have. Whoa. There's too much delay involved here. So I will stick to disturbed without the chorus and cranking up the volume a bit. So now we can just record a bit. This is basically everything and yeah, what I do normally is when I want to record is the following. I go here to the program and I am marking the region or the complete track and say toggle repeat. This means you play the song. And after it got out of this region you have just marked, it will start again. So I can then record two or three takes and I will choose that take that was decent enough and delete all the other tracks. Well, obviously, that's basically it. If you have recorded your stuff here in the DAW, like I've done here with this pink and the other gray track, you then render out your program or your recorded file. You do this with here, file, render, strife, demo. Program will render the file for you. And then you have to sync the recorded video to the audio and this is so tricky. I can also tell you a bit more about mixing, like if you want to mix decently you have to apply a low cut filter, this is here. You can add to your track an equalizer and then you cut away um, some frequencies, everything below 120 Hz for example. This will get rid of the bass mumble you have on your guitar and makes room for the actual bass. What I've done here is raising some mids to get more punch and also I have done a high shelf cut here because it was sounding too hard. But every guitar is working differently and so I just recommend to just mess around with the equalizer once you have found some settings that are suiting for you. Yeah. What I then do is adding compressors and also here on the, on the master volume I add some plugins for um, mastering like compressors and a volume limiter or volume maximizer but I think this is running too deep. You won't need these if you're just starting out. You just need the cam, this program, know how to record, know how to get files on the program and that's it. Trick is here, just 
mark all of your tracks you want to record, press this toggle repeat and then you can just start recording because this will run endlessly and you have the chance to record the perfect take. Alright, and for mixing, I normally don't use the monitor boxes because I'm living here in a, an apartment and people would like to have it calm and not noisy and this is why I would totally recommend to you to purchase decent headphones or not in-ear headphones but hard shell normal headphones so that you can mix without bugging your neighbors and also protecting your ear because in-ear headphones aren't too well for mixing. I got here these pretty Mesa Neo Classics. They are really cool. They sound so different compared to normal headphones you get at the store for 20 euros because I have then heard frequencies I've never heard before and was wondering why people tell me that my mix is saturating or something. I couldn't hear this with my old headphones and with these they are so awesome, they are working so well and I haven't been using anything else for a year now. They are still working and yeah, really cool stuff. So what I am doing now is I show you my program that I use for cutting videos. It's called Sony Vegas 12 Pro. My audio interface, which is just connected to the PC with this USB cable here. We have here the guitar input cable, which is into plugged into input one. And we have here the guitar cable, the blue one, that is connected to my guitar. All the cables are here, connected on my pedal board. I have here the whammy pedal. I'm using it pretty often when I want to play in drop tunings, like my guitar is in drop D. I have recorded in drop C sharp, so I'm using this pedal to drop tune. And then we have here the guitar tuner, and that's basically it. All the other effects, I'm adding them in bias or in Reaper. On a side note, when you are recording videos and you don't have artificial light, make sure that your camera is either working properly so that it can deal with darkness or what I have done in my early times, wait until the sun is shining and record with sunlight. Another tip might be that you take care of your cables so that they work in a long time. So treat your gear well. And if you're interested in the stuff I'm using for recording, I have put everything in the description. And if you have questions concerning certain gear stuff, you can just put it in the comments below. Also, among all comments, I will give away one of these special posters I have just printed this year and you will get it signed personally. Right, we are now here in Sony Vegas. We have checked out what you need to record, audio interface, cameras, blah, blah, blah. We have checked out the DAW, how to aim a track for recording, how to record, how to set a loop section so that you can record multiple takes at once. Now we have here Sony Vegas where we syncing audio and video. I have already imported the audio. You can do this with file, import, media, and then selecting the file you want to import and we have it here and if we are listening to it it's working and the hardest part is actually syncing audio and video i have already done this but normally you just hear something like this because i don't use my monitor speakers i have in-ear headphones also from Mizi. they are here <laughs> These beautiful Meizi in-ear headphones, I use them for recording without biting my neighbors. It's so difficult for me as I don't use monitor speakers. And then you can just think what sound I will have on my video. It's something like this. Just plain guitar. So what you have to do then is uh, testing out when your video is 
in sync with the audio. You have here a hint, here is the track starting and then you just watch the audio of your video when there's the first signal coming. It's these blue humps here and this is the first one but actually we're here at the second track so this would be enough for syncing it. No. So I guess that is everything I can show you. Syncing audio and video is the hardest part and the trick here is to zoom in because the more you zoom in, the better you can move the video file because it's more exact. Yeah, if you have done this, you can also add some fancy stuff to your video. What I always do as my normal camera is something like this, like really not that colorful. I sometimes add some more brightness and contrast and also some more color so that it looks appealing but this is also nothing you will need in the beginning yeah also you have seen here maybe some artificial light i'm using you won't use this in the beginning but i have saved so much money during the years that i have kind of built up my small home studio now but that's basically it. This is how I record my covers. Right, that's basically it, what I'm doing. You can then render the file in Sony Vegas with file render and then searching a format. It's MP4 that is working. And then you can just choose whether it's 1080 pixels, 720 or 4K. That's basically it. And if you have rendered the video, you can upload it to YouTube. If you have further questions, getting more into detail because I didn't want to talk too much about everything because I could fill two or three hours with it, you can just ask me questions in the comments. Also, if you want to have a second part where I explain some parts more in detail, like this is a complete overview video, and I could also offer you to record videos for all the steps I've shown here in this video. Otherwise, I really hope you have enjoyed these small tips I gave to you. At this point, I want to say many, many thanks to all of my patrons at Patreon supporting me there because they have been responsible for me getting a pedal board and the second action camera I have on my guitar body. Thank you so, so much. And special thanks go out to Mike, Michael, Mike, Diamo, Vladimir, Bruno Pierre, Harold, Trey and the Sanaya Breakfast Club. Thank you so much for your awesome support. The Trivium cover is already online if you want to check it out. I have linked it and also it's appearing here in the end card. Otherwise I'm working on other talking videos so just stay tuned and rock on.